Good afternoon, everybody. Whoa, keep quiet. Calm down. Yes, thank you very much. So, um, I have uh, the pleasure and the honor uh, to introduce the second keynote of the conference, Professor Pierre Dillenburg. Um, he's professor of learning technology at uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. And uh, he started as a teacher for elementary school and then went to uh, graduate in educational science in Belgium. He then took his PhD in uh, computer science in the UK in, at the University of Lancaster. And um, he's working on uh, computer-supported collaborative learning, as you also may see there, uh, classroom orchestration. And he just told me that uh, uh, a nice story, because he was an elementary teacher 30 years ago. And um, after 25 years now, where he's a professor, um, his students from back then, those little kids, they were grown up. And they looked him up on the internet. And uh, they had a party together with him. And so I think we can look forward to a very interesting um, and party-like <laughs> presentation. Welcome to the stage. Thank you. I'm very proud to be, to have been an elementary school teacher, because there are not many at the EPFL, the Swiss Institute of Technology, we have not many elementary school teachers, but they all know about education, of course. They've never taken one course of education in their life, my colleagues, professor, but they all know exactly what is education. So I'm in a school of technology, so I will be talking about technology today um, with a specific viewpoint. Imagine you are a teacher. The kids enter the room. The first thing they have to do is to log in on the computers. La première chose qu'ils doivent faire, c'est se loguer sur l'ordinateur. And then, of course, John has forgotten his password. Suzanne a la, la caps lock key qui est enfoncé. How much time to have the 30 kids log in in the computer? Drei minuten, vier, fünf. It can be up to 10 percent of your lesson time just for login. And why do, we, do the kids have to log in? Why? Because the guy in charge of the computers in the schools told you the kids have to log in. But there is no reason. Do you get 10 percent added value, 10 percent increase of learning gains? They waste 10 percent of the time of the lesson. So do you get 10 percent more? That's a question. And don't believe the guy in charge of the computers in your school. There is no need to, to log in. So that's the kind of topic I want to address today. Ugly stuff. Not, I will not talk about Piaget, Vygotsky, and all these useless things. I will talk about the real thing. You know, log in. Why do you waste 10% of the lesson time there? And um, we talk about computer-supported learning, technology-enhanced learning. I don't know if you've been teaching on this kind of classroom. Vous êtes mort. Si vous avez enseigné dans ce genre de classe, vous êtes mort. I promise to make a few sentences in French. And, uh, you know, there is no way to pass between the chairs, and there is no way all the kids are focusing on the screen. Vous ne pouvez pas avoir l'attention de vos élèves. That's a tool for, teach for killing teachers. You would say, non, Monsieur Dilambou, today we have iPads. So, if you are there, <laughs> as a teacher, you are dead. Les enfants, s'il vous plaît, les enfants, s'il vous plaît, votre attention, deux, s'il vous plaît, merci, merci, Michel. Les enfants, Suzanne, tu, non, Michel, tu recommences pas, non. Okay. It takes, again, three minutes to get the attention of the kids who are all on the iPad. I, you know, for people, iPad is the happiness, is, the, is fantastic. No. This is a thing that makes the orchestration of the classroom more difficult. Les iPads rend l'orchestration, la gestion de la classe plus difficile. This is my favorite one. This is in India. And it's low tech, but it's much better. 
Chaque enfant a une souris. Every kid has a mouse, and all the mouse interact on the same screen. Okay. So, it works. Each of them has a subset, which is more or less the same as if you give him an iPhone. Okay. Chacun des enfants contrôle une partie de partie de l'écran. But what is the difference? The difference is that the teacher remains in the middle, in front of the class. He's the boss. Here, the teacher is, is dead. Okay. <laughs> He's in the background. He has to fight to get the attention. It's not true. You can invent tricks. You say, turn it. You can survive to it. So that's the message of the day. I'm talking about very practical aspects of using technology in your classroom. This is my learning space, my modest Rolex learning center at EPFL. You see, we solve the problem. No students, that's much better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is where we are located on the side of the lake. Um, we ski in the morning, we sail in the afternoon, in the evening we have great wine. And I have a postdoc position open if ever you, you are looking for a job. So. Um, one word maybe about EPFL, so it's a kind of top school of high tech, and we went to the MOOCs business, the massive open online course. It's not a topic of the day. Uh, and from the point of view of pedagogy, many people say this is very bad, okay? All this hype about video-based lecturing, it's very bad. But I must say that in one year, we got 300 online students and uh, 50,000 have completed very difficult classes. So we can't say that MOOCs is too much blah, blah, and so on. Yes, that pedagogically they may not be so rich, yes. But when you are a university with 10,000 students, and in one year you get 50,000 more, there are things which are uh, changing. So maybe it's not a topic of the day, but if you pay me a beer tonight, we can discuss about that, because I'm also in charge of these MOOCs. So, the topic of the day is the classroom, the physical classroom. And the first one I want to show to you today is this one. And uh, this is a classroom in Bull for Berufsbildung, vocational education, la formation professionnelle, uh, des apprentis. And you will notice that the four computers there, let me see, here, have different colors. Why would computers have different colors? Now, do they smoke too much in Lausanne, or what's happening? Why do they consider that from the pedagogical point of view, it's good to have computers with different colors? I will answer to this question at the end of my talk. So we work with um, these people. Uh, they call logistic assistants, they drive forklift, they move big boxes in a warehouse. And um, if you are not from Switzerland, si vous n'êtes pas de Suisse, uh, ils travaillent quatre jours par semaine dans une entreprise, un jour par semaine, à l'école. Das ist die um, zwei Orte Berufsbildung System in der Schweiz. Uh, the, the basic principle of Swiss economy is that most teenagers learn a job when they're 16, and this system is, we are very proud of in Switzerland. We, okay, my car, because I'm not Swiss, my, my car registration plates are very proud of this vocational system. And we went to uh, investigate what they learn. So this is Patrick Yerman working with me. We f went into 10 companies and we spent one day with them, following them to understand what do they learn at a company when they are apprentices. Qu'est-ce qu'ils apprennent vraiment dans leur entreprise? La réponse est pas terrible. Okay. Not much. You know, they move boxes. As fast as possible. That's their job, you know. And uh, logistics is for the boss. It's not for the slaves, the box. Think about logistics, for instance, the product I sell every day, I will put it play next to the place where the trucks arrive. Ce que je vends tous les jours, je mets là où, près des quêtes de chargement. What I sell once per month is on the back of the warehouse. This kind of reasoning is not for the apprentices. C'est la compétence du chef. Okay. So, there is a gap between at school, they have a course of logistics. <sighs> logistics, mathematics. Physics, you know, these guys are not very good students. They've not been very good students so far. This is why they are apprentices in logistics. And uh, how, how do you teach logistics to this guy? 
uh, the optimization of the storage surfaces on a warehouse. That's very, it's very difficult for the teachers. So we came up with this technology, is that um, they build a warehouse on the table, on the desk. They take this plastic shelf, they take many of them, and they put it here, and they build this kind of technologies. And on the top, there is a beamer that will project information of this element. This is called augmented reality. Like here, you have a beamer that, through this mirror, project information on the top. This is a computer. It's just a computer that does not look like a computer, and that's what I want to show a bit today. You know, e-learning is so boring. Can we do things which are a bit more exciting into our classroom? So this is a computer, but uh, instead of manipulating a keyboard and a mouse, they manipulate this plastic shelf, and it looks like building a warehouse. So here is uh, an example of the activity. So. The teacher put the sheets of paper on the table. That's the activity's launch. This is why the trucks leave and arrive. And this is the feedback. You see, there was not enough space for the clerk to turn and to drop a box. Once they are ready, They can, you see on the left, it projects information on this sheet of paper. You can run the simulation. And you see the life of the whales. Here you have information like the average time necessary to move a box from the shelf to the truck. I hope the video is good downstairs because there are other people downstairs watching it. This is more difficult, stock management, um, how to load and unload the truck in such a way that the center of gravity is stable. La loi des leviers. Comment optimiser le stockage. Et voilà, le, la gestion de stock, c'est quelque chose d'assez difficile pour ces étudiants. OK, cool. Okay, they like it. The teachers like it. The teacher told us, wow, we can explain things which are so difficult. Now, do they learn something? Here is the result. We compare 20 teams learning with all gadget and 20 teams using like a big iPad, a multi-touch table, but the same software. And yes, uh, with a tangible interface, they have higher learning gains. Okay, good. Good PhD. But uh, it's not so, so clear that they learn more. The, the main thing was the role of the teacher. So there will be four teams in the room. Each of them play with the little wearers. And then the teacher will, for instance, they will copy information on this sheet of paper, the performance of the wearers. And then they will go to the whiteboard. Each team will compare um, the wearers that they've designed, and they will compare the surface, and then the teacher will try to help them to understand why is one wearers better than another one. We use that for several years in school, and even if, when we did a small control experiment, as we do in a lab study, we had results. But when we went to the school in a real context, uh, we fail, both in terms of understanding and uh, problem solving, we fail to have a significant difference with paper. Ah. So um, we continued uh, to work on that. And one of the students identified, in my team, identified a nice problem we call the manipulation temptation. Some kind of Catholic thing, you know? On ne peut pas toucher, tu touches trop, tu touches trop. So uh, here, you see, typically, um, the, the, le, le pire des groupes, il bouge tout. So basically, what they do is that they put the, the shelves and then they run the simulation and then they move the shelf, they run the simulation, they move the shelves, they run the simulation. After 10 minutes, they talk about what? The two most important things for male teenagers soccer 
girls, okay? Not about logistics. They just play, they don't learn. So how do you, and, and they don't really discuss about, you know, they don't reflect, they don't say, oh, maybe if we increase, if we put more shelves, we'll store more. Oh yes, but if we store more, the forklifts cannot pass, so they will be slower. They don't have this kind of discussion. This is not spontaneous. So Son, who invented that, came with this kind of orchestration sheets. How do you allow the teacher to manage these kids? So the teacher had this kind of paper card in his pocket. And um, when the kids cannot run the simulation, he showed a card to the lamp, they cannot run the simulation. They have to call the teacher. So they play, and when they are ready, they call the teacher. So the teacher comes, oh, I cannot go there. The teacher go, comes, and he say, okay, are you are ready? Yeah, we want to run the simulation. Okay, do you think it will be faster than before? <laughs> you know, you know the teenagers, huh? <laughs> yeah. Don't know. Okay, but think a little bit about it. I come back, so the teacher goes away. Monsieur, monsieur, monsieur. Alors, vous pensez que ça va aller plus vite? Yes, oui, 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 it will be faster. Why? <laughs> we don't know, but think about it and, and, and call me when you know. And then the teacher comes back and uh, they explain to him, he returned the card, he showed the card into the lamp and they can run the simulation. So it's like the iPad. When you have these four very cool, sexy technology in a class, as a teacher, your life is difficult. The kids are like that. They play, and you are there. Two uh, minutes, s'il vous plaît. Two minutes, votre attention. So we had to empower the teacher to, to design technology that makes the teacher um, more powerful. And this is my favorite one. Pause the class. There is one card. He show it, and the four lamps immediately becomes white. They cannot do anything. They can explain something for one minute, then you return the card, okay. Some people will say, Mr. De Lambeau, this is, uh, this is bad. The teacher should not be empowered. He should be a facilitator on the side. I think that was the best, uh, uh, main mistake of our learning community. This slogan, from, a, from the guide, sorry, from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. The teacher should be in the back, no. For constructivist teachers need to be very, Powerful, you need to manage the class. I'm not talking about lecturing. I'm not a Neo Sarkozy guy. Hein? I'm, I'm not, I, it's just to manage learning activities. Pour être un bon enseignant qui guide la découverte de vos étudiants, il faut avoir la classe en main. Il faut la gérer. You have to be the driver. And, this orchestra, and you see the teachers, they work like that in the class. Always with this. We had to do a bit more. Uh, we develop other tools that allow the teacher to, for instance, discuss. Um, this is the four teams working in the class, and for each team you can see what they've done. Here you see how many times they change the simulation, so you see if they play too much, what were the performance, so the teacher needs tool to manage, and this is what we call orchestration. Can we think the technology in such a way that we don't spoil the life of the teacher? We, uh, we help him, not help him, we, we give tools that, that give him the power he needs. And with this kind of technologies, um, we obtain finally significant result. Paper, ladies and gentlemen, is a fantastic invention. <laughs> we don't have the patent of it, unfortunately, some Chinese guy, but... Um, so these little cards are fine. They're fine if you give them five. If you now kind of become crazy and make 20 cards to manage a classroom, then the teacher will spend the time searching the card. And it, you know. So it's, it's not that paper per se will solve all the problem. So when I talk about orchestration, I talk about something dirty, which is not pedagogy per se. It's not worth a theory. It's very practical things. How much time for login? Um, do I see the kids? And so on and so on. That's a, a kind of flavor that I want to push into learning sciences. So when we talk about design, designing of a learning activity, we have the key ID. We want to create an activity, let's say, so that the kids will learn. But there are many other things in the classroom. Uh, like, do we have tool for the teacher to debrief, to summarize, to... You know, without the teacher, they don't learn. 
We need one guy to say, why? Tell me, explain me. And we need tools for being able to do that with different computers. And then in a classroom, there are a lot of things we are not exactly learning. Like, if you give a, a lesson on Pythagore, usually you don't give one 20-minute activity on Pythagore. You will, for three weeks, have five different activities on Pythagore. You have homework, Les Devoirs à la Maison, House of Gabon. We have a, we, in learning technology, we don't talk often, on ne parle pas beaucoup des devoirs, mais ça fait partie de la vie de la classe. Uh, parfois, on leur demande simplement de recopier. We ask simply to copy what is on the blackboard. Can we integrate that? So, not only the nice learning activity, but all the life with technology. And that's my favorite example. The, um, I had a sheet of paper somewhere. This is um, one sheet we designed with the, with the teachers. Um, that's the um, activity, so they've been working in the classroom, they've, four, they've built four wearables, and then they print the sheet of paper, and they go back to the work with the sheet of paper. And that's, uh, the homework is for next week. Please explain la comparaison avec votre entreprise. Uh, what are the differences between what you have done in school and what you have done uh, at work? That's the goal. We want to bridge the school and the work. We, on veut établir un pont entre ce qu'ils font à l'école et dans l'entreprise. The teacher told me, this is ridiculous. Monsieur Dillambourg, vous venez de l'EPFL, mais nos apprentis, our apprentices never do homework. Never. It's a rule. They don't do homework. Forget it. And 90% of them did their homework. Why? Well, because it was just this. You know, they are not supposed to go on a computer to log in and to say, boss, do you have two minutes? Uh, can we speak five minutes? No, the boss has not five minutes. But there, it's just a sheet of paper. You go, you see the boss. <sighs> boss, did you see what I did today at school? And say, hey, what is this? Huh? Huh, interesting. And that was enough. You know, paper is, a, is, from a logistic point of view, paper is a fantastic invention. But the idea here is that it's in the flow. A school is a routine world, and paper is part of this routine world. So here, you know, it, it, was, it was the explanation. And back again, you have seen at the beginning, the teacher launched the activity by simply putting a sheet of paper. So he has a binder. The binder is a curriculum. He opened the curriculum, he takes a sheet of paper, he put it on the table. No login, no HTTP slash something slash something. Donc le curriculum est un classeur avec chaque feuille est une activité. So we can, um, in the design of the technologies, integrate this logistic aspect. On peut, dans la conception de technologie, con intégrer ces aspects logistiques. You would say, well, but Pierre, that's not our business. We are on education. We are not computer scientists. It's true that I train computer scientists. But you know, now you know that you can ask things like that. This, everybody can do that. It's just a tag. It's free, the routines. Any small computer scientist can implement this today. And um, so if somebody gave you complex system, you say, no, sir, I want to have light technologies in my classroom. Uh, let me skip that one. So another way to summarize this is that when you design an activity, there are some deep reason to design it. All people learn this content. That's the basic of educational psychology. That's true. No question about that. But there are also another set of things to consider. And um, like the time, not only the time, but the, t the fact that time is segmented into slices of 50 minutes. Uh, discipline. Uh, sorry. Control of the classroom. I don't know. In this conference, in the conference where I go, we never talk about discipline. On ne parle jamais de la discipline. On considère que tous les enfants sont sages, ils vont apprendre, ils vont être motivés. And uh, if you are a teacher, a school teacher, if you are trained, the first question is, will I manage my class? Okay, that's the first thing. If there is no discipline in the classroom, the director will call, the parents will call. Okay, that's the first concern. If you have teenagers, it's even worse. So uh, here is an example. 
One of these two, these are two lamps, the same as the one you have seen. A beamer, a mirror, a beamer, a mirror, a camera, a mirror, a camera. Okay, one of these two lamps is not good with the apprentices, with teenagers. It's not good. The black one or the white one? The people downstairs can vote by knocking on the ceiling. En bas, vous pouvez voter en tapant en plafond. Pour la noire, votez 1. Okay, which one is bad? Who says the white one? Raise your hand. Who says the black one? Why the black? Oh, you raised your hand randomly. Okay. <laughs> There is one thing that you lose with the black one, is you lose the, vi the visibility. Like, you know, these are teenagers, that of guys, you know, you must scan them, you know, you must scan them visually all the time, you know, otherwise they will smoke or even worse. So, so here, this is not good because you can't see the students, and that's a real problem. Now, if you take an elementary classroom, it's the other way around. Quite often in elementary schools in Switzerland, there is a little corner with a library, a petit coin de lecture, avec un, un petit sofa, une petite bibliothèque. Et là, c'est super d'avoir une table, une lampe un petit peu plus cosy comme ça pour que l'enfant, so that the kids are alone in the room. So, uh, that's the philosophy. So, is it only one study, only one context? I want to show you that this applies to a different context. The second one is used with carpenters. Uh, still, Berufsbildung, la formation professionnelle des charpentiers, et uh, on retrouve les mêmes éléments, tangible objects and, uh, and paper cards. Uh, le sujet, c'est la visualisation d'objets en 3D. These people have to learn 3D orthogonal projection, which is quite complex. And uh, they spend three hours per week for three years doing this. This construction line, three hours per day for three years, uh, three hours per week for three years. And you know what? They never draw plans at the workplace. At school, for three years, they draw plans. And at school, never. It's the boss. Actually, no. The boss never draw plans. He uses a computer, of course. Nobody is drawing plans by hand today. So. Then you say, oh, but today, yeah, it's important that they learn that to learn the 3D reasoning. And here, the idea of this activity was that they learn this complex 3D reasoning. So why is paper so good? And one of the explanations is that, basically, this is a computer window. Huh? That's, that's like, a, like a window, like a software window. But you have three layers of information. One that is printed, one that is handwritten by the students, and one which is beamed by the computer. Uh, these are the three layers of information. And because it was successful, we say, okay, now we can go to elementary school and try something different with that, which is geometry. What is cool with paper, you can fold, you can rotate, you can uh, cut, you can read <laughs> it if you want. You, it's, uh, it's quite relevant to teach geometry. So here is one of the activity that we did. The first one was about angles. Come on. Oh, yes, it's coming. So we started, that was here in the canton Neuchâtel and also in the canton of Geneva. Uh, the first activity is that they have to learn to measure an angle, but with a real protractor, avec un vrai um, rapporteur, merci. Um, C'est dans le plan d'études. Il faut apprendre à utiliser un vrai rapporteur, not a virtual one. So here they wanted to make 70, but they were wrong. And okay, now they will try to validate. And then next is to make on the other side. Okay, very simple learning activity, uh, but uh, you will see. It created, uh, I, I did not stress that this technology are all designed to have teams of kids, not kids alone. Um, so, um. 
Bruxelles Ouais, tu vas voir. Ouais, je veux voir. En Paris 118. Ah ouais. Mais voilà, c'est pas 128. En fait, il y a un sondage Attends, des deux côtés. Ok, that, that was a simple one. Uh, a new one, a, a bit richer, is that the team is split in two. On the one side, the kids have to kill this old satellite, which is dead. It has to be removed. So they have to compute the angle from base one on the Earth to be able to shoot this satellite. And uh, so that's what they do here. And then they will write down on a piece of paper. On the other side, the kids are waiting. They will write down the value of the angle is something used for communicating the shooting angle to another team. And it's communicated there. And then the second team has to uh, do the shooting. To measure the angle. He missed, and you will see. Uh, so it creates a real um, life in the classroom. Okay, here is another one. Uh, because you can fold, you can also teach uh, easily symmetry axis, where this is an activity where you can draw half of the, and automatically the second half is being drawn. And um, we design, I don't know, about 20 activities with the teacher. The nice thing with paper also is that you can design these activities with the teacher. You go to the cafeteria, you take a sheet of paper, and you draw it with them. You don't write specification. Uh, so with this teacher, we invented a lot of, uh, of activities. This is not so interesting. So, maybe one comment about that. This activity worked well. That was the title of my talk. Because we designed it with the teachers. Not because the teacher told us this is what we need. <coughs> teachers are great, but they're not so creative. In average, some of them are creative. My students in computer science, they are great, but they know nothing about a classroom. So it's not that we came and said, oh, we have a solution for you. It's not that they said, oh, we would like to have an uh, interactive shelf. No, it is ping pong by working, co-designing with teachers that progressively led to solution. And I finish by a last example, no, completely different. Um, Here. Uh, now we walk to EPFL. No, we can, should not only ask the others to use technology, we should use them ourselves. So, and we always start from an interesting problem. And you will see an interesting problem. You will see the class of physics first year. Okay? We select two percent of the best Swiss students, half of them will fail in the first year because of that class, Physics 101. And they have two, typically two hours uh, lectures followed by two hours exercise. And here is a one minute video of the exercise session. So they received a sheet of paper with 10 exercises, and when they need help, they call the teaching assistant. They receive des exercises, physique première année, and quand ils ont besoin d'aide, ils appellent l'assistant. Après quelques minutes, ils changent le bras, they change arm because they get tired. And look, look at what's going on here. 
Here is the teaching assistant. Voilà l'assistante. Et regardez ce gars ici. Look at this guy. Okay. The toughest course of APFL, Physics 101, the killing course. And look at this guy here. He's continuing to walk. But where is she going? She is going to him. He won. The guy who continued to walk is still waiting. So you cannot do that. Why? Because you must grab the teaching assistant as soon as she is available. And uh, Ahmed computed, uh, Ahmed uh, Alavi who designed this, computed the wasted time. 62% of the wasted time is lost. Okay, that is not good. Okay, we cannot be that bad. We have to do something. So, um, he invented the lantern. Uh, I would go in the dark. For the cameraman, can you follow me? So that will be, be better in the dark. So, the color, so the kids, the students, enter in the room, they put that on the desk, they usually work teams of two or three. Hein, ils prennent ça, ils la posent sur le bureau, en général, ils travaillent par équipe de deux ou trois. Et, um, the color indicates which exercise. Exercice 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Pourquoi Parce que si, si je suis à l'exercice 5, if I'm on 5, and everybody else is on 1, tous les autres sont au 1, maybe I can wait a few minutes, okay? I, can, I will get my Nobel Prize later on. Um, now, the number of LEDs, the number of LED, augment progressively, goes up progressively. Why? Because if I need help when I'm here, I will never become an engineer. Pour devenir un ingénieur, il faut que j'essaye quand même un peu plus et un certain temps. Okay, that's it. Stupid technology. No, nothing. Je tourne, okay, et puis, voilà. When I need help, I push on it, and it starts blinking. <laughs> Slowly first, and then faster and faster. Stupid technology. I'm from Belgium. <laughs> from the right part of Belgium. <laughs> I asked to put all the Flemish in the basement during my talk. So, stupid technology, okay? And here is the result. The wasted time went down from 60% to 6%. Okay, and um, I don't know what I wanted to say. So basically, it's simple. They come, they they put the thing, and when they need help, they push on it, and they continue to work. And also, when they wait, they discuss more. Before the guy was like that. When they wait for the teaching assistant, they discuss more with each other. In addition, the teacher receives a summary for every exercise, how much time they've been working. Uh, waiting. So here, my students waited 17 minutes last week. No, that's not good. I, uh, maybe the exercise is too difficult or I need more teaching assistants. Il faudrait que je mette plus d'assistants là parce qu'on ne peut pas les laisser attendre 17 minutes comme ça. So again, when, when the technology people sell you technology and they say this is smart technology, tell them no. We don't want smart technology. We are fed up of smart technology. We guess we pretty. We just want simple things that work. And um, so we could have an iPad application or whatever where you would say, "I need help for exercise three," and the teaching assistant will be there, working in the classroom with uh, going to the next team and so on. Could it could work? But sometimes it's better to make the technology. Uh, in the background, modest, you know. I could display the exact waiting time, but I prefer to show something a bit romantic, less precise, less accurate. Uh, I deliberately reduce, je réduis délibérément, volontairement, la précision et la résolution de l'information pour la rendre plus acceptable. Okay, so why is the color of the computer important in this classroom? This is the post-test. Okay. <laughs> there was no pretest because, okay, I will not tell you. Uh, this is a post test. Why is the color of the computer so matter in this context? If you take the individual interaction with the computer, it does not change anything. They play with this, with this object. 
If you take the team interaction, that's very cool because we can exchange, manipulate together, and so on. It's at the third level. The color of the computer has no importance at the individual or at the team level. But at the third level, at the class level, then it allows the teacher to say, the blue team, the red team, that's it. Very simple thing. It's at the orchestration level, at the classroom management level. And um, so we have these three circles. And basically, what I'm stressing is that some of these technologies, especially paper, is very practical at this third level. So if you have to analyze technology from a point of view of orchestration, these are the six principles that you have to keep in mind. Control, keeping the kids, the beast, under in in the control. Visibility, can I, do I see all my students all the time? This last week I was teaching with an eye tracker, you know, a mobile eye tracker. So we investigate how much teachers look at every student in the class. Flexibility, can you change it easily? Physicality, we like to touch. You know, these guys say, no, sir, not like that. In my company, we have the office of the boss there, so, so by having, having things concrete, they connect to the real life. Don't target heroes, is that we try to design technology that all teachers. We have always one friend who is a teacher who is fantastic. He's ready to work all the Sunday to prepare the experiment. I'm not talking about this teacher. We are talking about the normal people like me. They like to ski on the Sunday, not to prepare lesson. And you notice there are six principles, because the, the last and most important principle, and this is exactly my last slide, is uh, this one. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I heard there is no time for question, but there is another session for question. There is another and where is it? It's in uh, building C6 or room 624. 624 if you want to ask question. Right. And thank you for this very, very special and very amusing lecture. Thank you. It's a very, very well um, through and um, well, thank you a lot. Thank so. you. Thank you. I fly tomorrow morning, so I cannot take it with me. So if you come to the next session,